And am I right? Because sex education historically has always induced moral panic, always. And, you know, we had a case of it here with, you know, the the revised curriculum, health PE curriculum, sex ed, ed curriculum in Ontario, and I don't have to tell educators in the room about that and then Ford government was um, elected and then they rescinded that progressive curriculum and required everybody to return to the 1998 version of it. But within the context of that sort of backlash, you know, there were discussions, educators were talking about, well, you know, does that mean I can't address gender diversity within, you know, the English classroom in other areas of the curriculum? So I think that it has to be framed as you know, all youth need to see themselves represented in the curriculum. Baseline, um, all human rights, the human rights of all students need to be represented and addressed, right? So, and I, I, I see a distinction between, I don't think there is a requirement or an option for something I will investigate, though, um, and maybe we can look at it Um you know, I want to look at that more closely, but as I understand it, you can't just withdraw a, a, um, a student from another area of the curriculum. I don't think that that applies. So I can speak a little bit more to that. Um, and so the folks who are in my class, I'm sorry, you're going to hear this again, but this speaks to the importance of knowing the policy that we're working with. And there are very clear procedures for requesting an accommodation on whatever basis to be removed from the health and physical education. This is only K to eight, it doesn't apply to high school. And every single board is going to have procedures put in place. But if you don't know that those procedures exist and you aren't familiar with what that process looks like, then if somebody comes to you and says, I'm yoinking my student from your classroom, you're gonna say, okay, I guess, because I don't know any different. And I don't know who to ask at my board about whether or not this is what we're supposed to be doing. So the familiarity and the fluency with policy is critical to understanding what our roles and responsibilities are as educational workers within a school. Um, the second part of that is that the um, health and physical education is the only one that you can request to be removed from. Um, this does not apply to your day-to-day -day procedures or lessons at all. In fact, one of the very first lines in the Education Act says that the purpose of education is to create caring citizens. And we cannot do that if we're not learning about folks with identities that we don't hold. And so this is embedded. Again, it's a job embedded expectation that every single student see themselves represented and that students who don't hold that identity, or who are not part of those communities also learn about them because that is what helps us create safer spaces for students.